I'll start our generation ultimate in a second. Uh, I'm here with a very cool person. Uh, this was a little bit last minute, but I'm, I'm hyped to have him in anyway. Sarah, if you want to kind of introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, so I'm the local idiot who's chosen not to mute the stream that I had in the background. So now I have myself <laughs> coming through as an echo. Um, everything sounds great, by the way. Yeah, so hello, I'm Sarah. I've appeared on Hunting with Friends before. Um, very lovely time, although I'm sure my audio was a lot less uh, good at the time. Um yeah, so we're sort of popping in very last minute, considering time zones, and I'm just sort of doing a, a, a short talk segment, I suppose, about the new developer diary that dropped today uh, over Alatrion and a couple of extra surprises as well. Yes, yeah, so developer diary 6, we got a little bit of a teaser on Friday, I believe it was. Uh, and so this is mostly about Alatrion. I think that's the, really the big point here. We'll touch on the other monster they announced. Um, I'm not... I don't see a whole lot of like excitement um, like for it. Like I don't a whole lot of use for its armors either. But we'll go over it kind of briefly. We we'll can talk about it in a second. That being said, let's uh let's kind of get started. This is gonna be the dev diary. We're gonna watch this together, uh, and then we'll get into some generation ultimate afterwards. And I've got uh, some updates for you guys on that because I've done a little bit of off-camera farming. Okay, wonderful. Let me uh, just pull up my shit here. By the way, just to let you know, I've just gotten the notification for Twitch, so there may be a slight delay in everything. We'll just check out. The yeah, it always does that. Thing. People have questions, we can always answer them too. Exactly, exactly. So, so, so far, aesthetics look great. Um, the last round's quest is going to be awesome. I'm a little concerned about the blur that goes off when that when that big the big um eschaton wave. They, they, they have just taken like a syllable from a Latrion and just got like, hey, yeah, I guess we'll put that in there. <laughs> I mean, the arm was always called Escadora, and we kind of didn't realize make a lot of sense to call it that. So I'm kind of cool with them kind of bringing that together. We're sorry exactly, yeah. Waiting, so I think we're pretty much synced up. I'll try and so yeah, we're basically at the same kind of point here. So. As usual, I'm joined but yeah, by wonderful. Um, I, I thought this was a really, really nice developer update. A bit sparse, but that's kind of to be expected, be considering. Given the Backstreet Boys Union tour and everything. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. The, the most started. important event of the uh, of the summer. So. Some of you may have seen our latest trailer already, but let's take yeah. another look. So what do you reckon about um, Alatrion appearing in... Safi's arena. I think that's a that's an incredibly interesting touch. Like considering during the storyline, we've kind of gone like, oh, we beat Safi, we had to deal with some variants, but then a new tenant has moved into the uh, what's it, secluded valley? I think is the name of the Something area. Like that. It's a real. I think it's a good touch. That that arena is really cool. It also means that we could get a Latran moving between zones potentially. Uh, yeah, that would be very interesting. And if that coincides with what it shows us later, that'd be uh, very very interesting. Uh, by the way, grab uh, just a reminder. I hope you're recording this. <laughs> oh, it's it's all on stream. I'm not doing a. I'll, I'll rip it from the VOD. But perfect, perfect. <clears throat> Dude, that like that effect this there with like the blanked out sound, kind of like Volstrax's uh, Sonic Boom attack was such a nice we'll touch. Talk about what's ahead yeah, the it's. So stay it's uh, I'm really excited, honestly. I. Regardless of, wh of how the fight is, I'm actually really excited for this. I, unlike most people, actually really like Latrion, so... <laughs> yeah, you are definitely in the minority with that one, I'll tell you that. Because I, I enjoyed Latrion as a speedrunning monster, like a head snipe thing, but outside of that, nah. So I'm going to pause it right here, um, and I'm just going to mention the one weird thing is that everyone, they keep pronouncing Alatreon, which sounds... Really dude, I awkward. Dude, I touched on this today. So the the voiceover says like Ala Treon, but I've always been A Latreon. So yeah, like same. Alatreon is the. Or even I could even go, I could understand even like Alatre uh, Alatre. Uh, Al I don't know, I'm going to say it really quickly. You'll Do get it, it. You'll get it. Alatreon, Alatreon. <laughs> uh, like just kind of doing it faster, but but like Alatreon, and like it's a weird place to put the accents and. You know and what it is? It, it it feels weird to me because Alatreon is kind of like the French accent they have over the E. Um, whereas with Alatreon, it's kind of like the traditional um, Western American English pronunciation of the E, which is E by itself. The thing is, so too, Alatreon is that... Alatreon or Alatreon, it's all about the that one E, you know? Alatreon sounds a lot like it's two words. Like, it's A-L-A-T apostrophe t-r-e-o-n oh no dude i was going like full-on muslim with that i was like allah treon yeah i mean that what? too like that would make sense <laughs> but, like, like that that makes sense like they would feel like that like i almost 
it's I, I guess as much in the vein of like see the till Tigrex Tigrex debate, which Tigrex is obviously correct, but uh, um, the game it's yeah, now canonized as Tigrex, wrong, so but uh, yeah, you know, Tigrex is correct. Well, right. yeah. Let's continue. Look, I'm English. I have to say T. <laughs> All right, let me know. <laughs> All right, starting again. Final boss. It certainly okay, left good. And yeah, so Elastrion was the final boss of Monster Hunter Tribe, like the online before. mode. Um, it was, and it was horrifying. It has a very uh, notorious. Um, it can switch between fire. Uh, what's it called? Like uh, no very notoriously hard to break horns, and they needed horns for all of the armor and all of the weapons. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the sky piercers or sky swears in G rank were, uh, were a very big deal. Um, and they were, they were quite elements. tough to uh, to break. Uh, worse so, though, a lot of people don't mention this. Actually, grab. Let's, let's pause here very, very briefly. Well. I do want to go back on something here. Um, if we can just go back to around about the point where it shows off the different forms. So the 249. So yeah, let's say 249, shall we? So um, the biggest, the first thing I noticed from this picture, and I thought I was thinking about this this morning when I first watched this, there's yeah. no thunder element here. That's the thing. That's one thing I did want to touch on is that we kind of see later on, and I'll sort of be, if if you don't mind, I'll kind of be doing like a pause replay kind of thing. Yeah, no worries. So um, right now we have three main stages. So fire, dragon, and ice. Now, Alatrion has been noted for only having control over four of the five elements that we currently have in mainline Monster Hunter. So that's dragon, fire, ice, and thunder. Thunder is a very interesting thing about this because it seems as though he can use thunder throughout all of the stages. And I mean all of the stages. So um, he could he can be in fire mode but still use a thunder attack. You'll probably see some examples later on. But if we go a little bit further on, there is something I want to point out from like a speedrunner sort of point of view. So if we just hit play here. I'll back up again. Those 50 uh, and weak points all change too. So let me see if I can get the. Here we go. Here we go. So You'll 257. If we stop there, I'm going to be real, real like particular about this, just so you know. Um, so you see a Latrion sort of on the left, um, slowly walking, slowly walking. Now this thunder attack comes out in waves, kind of like the best Trivium album and Stygian Zenoga's thunder, uh, like dragon summon attack. You see how it goes slowly and then does a, a brief roar. If you can get ahead of that short, like tiny, oh, well, I say tiny, that short, like first burst of thunder, then you're laughing, like because you can just stand by Electron's head and cap it. I mean, it's literally like this is not from a speedrun thing. You can take the tactic into your standard, your standard runs as well, and from and really like temporal mantle through that first attack, dive into it. So that it, exactly, it yeah. launches you forward, and then you just wail on the head. Now the question is, as they mentioned, not only do its elements change with each phase, but it also its weak spots. Which means some phases we're going to need to be hitting the head, some phases we're going to need to hitting the probably the body, and some phases we may even need to hit the wings or the tail. What? So uh, and this I'll bring this up now, since because it's, I think it's really relevant to the whole weapon swapping or not weapon swapping. I'll, I'll bring it up in a second, but the whole element swapping thing. Weapons for this quest. How often are you do, you do you think we're gonna have to swap actually change what weapon we're using? Um, oh goodness. Um, so I think there's two possibil possibilities with this one. Either he's gonna go through three stages and it's gonna be area timed kind of like Safi. Um, he'll go through the, the three stages of Safi's nest, maybe a potential fourth. Um, or it'll be just something that happens. Um, probably not a random probably there there will have to be an anchor there because you know as luck might have it you might have like two element shifts back to back and then you'll just get screwed but um i think it'll probably be kind of like a nova thing like teostra or lunastra or you know uh val black veil specifically like they're kind of nova in that you have to if you don't damage them out of it then you won't get screwed. Now, they do mention the mechanic later on, which I think we'll touch on, but right now it's kind of very ambiguous. Like a lot of this stuff is kind of said in the in the vein of, you know, we don't know a lot of the mechanics of the fight. We probably won't for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think <sighs> I, I think, think it's really one of my concerns is that this fight, not to 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 shit on it before it ever even comes out, but from the little bit that we know right now, this fight is looking to be behemoth levels of difficult for random groups. 
And as someone exactly. who does a lot of random groups, because most of the people I play with live in other time zones, this is really can be really frustrating for me because it's either I solo this thing and I get and I take all of my maxed out light bow guns to swap target or to swap things with with the, just by spamming farcasters, go back and change stuff so I can hit the right things I need to hit, hit the uh, right weaknesses as well, or uh, which I really would rather not fight this thing solo. Uh, or I have to rely on people who one probably don't know how to fight how the fight works says welcome to random groups and two I have to then rely on them to know that the strategy is hey phase one we're all bringing X element weapon phase two we're all farcastering back and grabbing a different phase uh, a different element and yeah we don't actually know yet if those phases are set in stone. Like, does it always start with this? Like, I imagine it always starts in, in like, fire, but maybe it goes to ice sometimes. Maybe it goes to dragon sometimes. Maybe it changes, and we have to actually react with the color that the monster is to what, what we need to do, which would be very cool, but at the same time, that's a lot to ask of players, many of which can't be bothered to learn fights that are much easier than this one. Exactly. So, to offer a, a slightly different perspective, if I may, whilst we keep the video paused, mm -hmm. um, an interesting thing is that very, very much the speedrun meta has been either three-piece Teo, uh, sorry, three-piece Safi, two-piece Teo with a Safi weapon, uh, three-piece Teo, two-piece Brachidium, or in some rare cases, two-piece Brachidium with three-piece Safi with, you know, various sharpness uh, means, you know, protective polish or, or an item prolonger, things like that. Um but a lot of those runs will use blast weapons. I think there's only been a couple of runs I personally have done recently with standard melee weapons uh, that have necessitated the use of um, uh, of different elements or statuses. So for mm -hmm. Goose, it was ice, and for Rathlos, it was dragon. I used dragon for that one. Um, whereas with something like Legiana, you know, uh, if I ever ran Kushala, you know, Brute Tigrex, whatever, it would still be Blast. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is with Alatrion, uh, again, we'll touch on this in a bit, but you mentioned the swapping out of uh, various light bow guns or, or, you know, with bow guns and such being your preferred weapon. Um, the difficult thing is, is you have something like, what, is it Kya? Oh, God. There is one gun that fires rapid fire thunder, but also single shot. Uh, ice, so that's Kiar Thunder uh, fires rapid fire thunder, but if it's actually a better ice single shot ice gun exactly. than it is a rapid fire thunder exactly. gun. Exactly, but you have those two options, so potentially you could. But then you have to make a set that's like, oh yeah, max ice attack, max thunder attack. Thunder and it's, attack. It's honestly, there's and honestly, there's just simply not enough slots for that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and it makes me think that like if Alatrion is also going to encourage you to swap weapons like this. This is going to be such a far cry from the previous Alatrium fights. Like previously, Alatrium was garbage because of its air mode, because it just, you know, you had to head snipe to get it down. And even then, it took a bunch of well timed, powerful shots, which is why Hammer was basically king on the guy, uh, you know, mm -hmm. for the turnarounds and such. Whereas now he doesn't fly as much, but he has this element thing going on whereas like yes the element zones change but he also now has a requirement so you can't just bring blast or paralysis or poison or whatever and ignore it you you end up needing to have an element something that does restrict your gameplay and that's the main thing that's like before like when this trailer first dropped i went look at those attacks latrion looks fucking amazing pardon mm -hmm. my language but after it i'm now like oh well i can't just unga bunga with raw unless the nova is damage gated there's so many different variables right now and i think it's going to take the the monster itself coming out to mm -hmm. realize this but let's continue on with the video anyways oh actually just before we mm -hmm. do um there is one small thing on the clip that you're on so i'm at three minutes at this point um if you want to go back to like 258 or so um Notice the breath attack that Alatrion is using. Whether to split up, covering the ice the breath. So it's yeah. So something I've noticed too is that he's it got. Doesn't quite look like ice though, does it? That's that looks like water, doesn't it? A bit, but it's it's frozen around it. I think it's intended to be an ice breath because it also has the same kind of like movements and things as uh, Valkana does. It just extends the attack from just being a, a sweep underneath to sweeping all the way around and back up. Yeah. 
play well against I don't think it can use water. It's never been able to before. Be it's never been able thing. to, but the you know, they, they are changing a lot of stuff. Changing between elements. So it's Eschaton Judgment was the name of the attack. So this is the, yeah. the nuke, and you're going to watch the Hunter's Health Bar. That doesn't look and that was a so max potion they used, and it still killed them. But there is a way to mitigate the Shockwave's power. So the, you can weaken it with elemental attacks. With elemental weapons and continue to damage it. So if we just go up to the point where it flinches during the slow motion point. Yeah, yeah. so if we pause right before that. So yeah. I want to note that there is a difference between what is said here in the dev diary and what is said in Yuri's uh, dev blog. So mm -hmm. Yuri's dev blog, and Yuri's the, one of the community managers for Capcom. For the US, yeah. yeah. for the US, yeah. And so he, what he has said is that you have to attack it with, the, with this elemental weakness in order to weaken the Eschaton Judgment. What it says here is you have to just weaken it with elemental attacks in general. If you can use any element, then it's a significantly easier task to take this thing down. Now, that does still cause the, uh, bring up the question of, what about weapons that use raw? What about hunting horn, hammer, and greatsword that you don't take elements on? You take the raw weapons, and sometimes with blasts, which blasts yeah. is... Uh, playing devil's advocate, there is an argument for elemental hunting horn, but yes, I see the point you're making. Um, so let me let me give you an example if I can interrupt here. Yeah, Brad. go for it. So and we've got a question Ebony once you get finished too. Okay, of course. Uh, Ebony Odegaron, um, wonderful monster, uh, great expansion onto Odegaron in Master Rank. Honestly, I prefer it, even though it's not the best. But it has a face aura. Where you have to do elemental damage. If you take a blast weapon that's not gun lance or a bow gun, I guess. Um, if you take a, a melee weapon that's blast against uh, Ebony Odegaron, you will not get an extra stagger from its face. That's because, regardless of how it is, regardless of how whatever element you're using, even Dragon does a very, very small amount. And the reason I say gun lance is because gun lance does a very minute amount of fire damage with its shells so even if you bring blast you can actually get this this stagger from uh, ebony's face mm -hmm. um but i'm thinking potentially it could be like that so potentially it could be no matter how small the element that you use still counts just bring elemental weapons to stop every every mofo bringing you know safi shatter whatever um All alternatively right. um you again and this is what i was touching on earlier which was you do have to bring an elemental weapon and then it changes elemental hit zone so you have to switch mm -hmm. which is going to make this shit a nightmare for ta and non-ta runners like either you're going to have to find a way to just raw damage ungabunga through with blast or paralysis or poison or whatever mm -hmm. or you're just going to have to keep swapping and for ta that's a no-go like that's that's it that's it you can't run the monster basically pretty much yeah um and so uh, but, Dorkmas um, Prime actually has yeah. a, a good question here, and that's, is the Shockwave undodgeable and blockable? And I've kind of uh, rewound to 312 to watch back through it again. Elements. And you'll notice so if you watch the health bar right here, this is not a single hit. This is both, This is a drain, almost like a, um, almost like the fire wave from Lunastra, almost. It, it does not look like a blockable attack. This looks like he just superheats the atmosphere's air, and that nukes you down if you're not if you've not already weakened it. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So potentially you could also just Superman dive through it. Um, I don't, I don't feel it's not one hit though. It looks to be probably thirty or forty hits that chunk you down. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like uh, with Lunastra's Nova, with enough timing, uh, you can just spam Superman dodge and avoid the basically constant wind pressure she uh, she you know pukes out um it looks that being said i use that as an example but i think it's actually gonna be more difficult than that because the, this one you can see it, it's a constant ticking down rather than um what's it called rather than like lunastra you have a little bit of leeway between each individual blast that comes out and what really kills um, you is the fire on the ground because she knocks you into the fire you stand up and you burn to death but in this know, case it kind of reminds me of like um uh like Z Rathlos, where it would leave like oh, no, Z Gravios, where it would leave like lingering fire or something. Yeah, um, Flyer said it looks like a B Ravigante's meteor a bit. Um, and Dorkers also brought up if B you can. I oh, wait, oh, Flyer's here. Yeah, Flyer's here. Oh shit! Hey, Flyer. Uh, what? Uh, Berserk Raviente. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, yeah. Dorkmas as well yeah, was saying yeah. um, if you can, I if you can iframe through some of them, could you not avoid the hundred to zero? Well, that's the thing. So if everybody's iframing through them then 
so this this thing kills him through two almost two full HP bars. So you notice he, there's a max potion here. Is one. Yeah. He uses a max potion part of the way through the attack, and still dies. So max potion's at two. He spams it down. He takes it. He goes back to full, and then it still kills him. So the, I don't think being able to I, there's, I'm not sure there's enough you can iframe through this attack that will survive without you using elemental damage. Yeah. Hey, Phil. Yeah. 100%. Um, uh, so, if we go on to, now that we've sort of touched on the Nova, well, if we go on to the mechanics, to the my thought was yes. that essentially it does like a fixed amount of tick damage, right? You'll need mm -hmm. to attack but Elytrion the more with elemental, elemental staggers you get, the more that tick damage is reduced. is reduced. Yeah, I think I, I think yeah. it's probably a threshold you gotta hit, and it's gotta be exactly an elemental stagger. Um, the question so like, is... Say, say you hit like one elemental stagger, but you get uh, like, I don't know, a health bar and a half, and then another one you get one health bar, and then another one you get half a health bar. So you have to hit like a certain amount of elemental staggers in order to make sure that you can just blast through it. Because you notice the hunter doesn't flinch, so it might just be one of those attacks that you just have to face head on. You're not gonna get thrown mm -hmm. back, and if you do enough elemental damage, potentially you can just, uh, God forbid me for using this word, but tank through it. I mean, um, we it, it is an attack, and that's actually something that they they talk about right in right after this, like three forty three, three forty four. Is that uh, you can up. yeah, so you can is it a yeah, three, it's like three forty, three forty three. But they talk about you can you can heal your allies during it with, and they actually use um probably dust of life because I think that's probably what the, yeah. the health. Um, but you can. You could very likely, in theory, if all four players begin to spam Dust of Life, you might be able to survive if one of you did no exactly. elemental damage. I think they touch on that, don't they, Jiren? Because mm -hmm. uh, I think it's um, Ichihara uh, says, like, oh yeah, you can, but... But I think, I think the best course win. of action will be to utilize elemental attacks. And oh yeah, yeah, I see it. And it's just like, and so, and Dark was also brought up, and I think this is more of a cheesy meme than anything, but uh, if, if four hammer users all super pound each other in unison and knock you back, which puts you in iframes, admittedly, could you avoid the whole attack? And the possibility wow. of that is both ridiculous and something I actually kind of want to try at some point. Oh, crap. Uh, no, 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 no. That's even better. So, do you remember the old, like, uh, double cross slash four ultimate strat where you'd put down a feline bomb, eat a mite seed, and then get blasted away. Or if you needed to heal, you put down a bomb, then eat a mega potion, get immediately healed. So what if you just put down a small barrel bomb, get blasted away, and then you just go through like the iframes you get from being hit by this tiny attack, throw you like away from the Nova. <laughs> That might be the strat. I mean, honestly, Dude. next week we can test that. I actually kind of want to test that because that's still a strat in, G, in GU that, as well. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Like you take a oh, might seed in G, you put down a, a small barrel bomb, you take a might seed, and then you use the barrel bomb to knock you into the next area because it's faster than waiting for the, the might seed animation to end. Yes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. All right. Let's let's uh, let's keep going then. So um, it depends. The I think my, my stance personally is yeah, it depends on what the requirements battle. are for the Nova, of course we can um, about the but we'll see. Equipment. Okay, equipment. So this is kind of a big point here. So yes. it looks cool. Let's be honest. It looks amazing. And they took they took the already very very cool Latrion armor and made it look even better and brought it into world. So we'll get to that in just a second here when it kind of loads through. So look at this. Grab, I, I want you to know that we're probably going to spend like an hour talking about this because we haven't had the chance to yet. So. Oh, I'm totally cool with that. Um, okay, so if we pause at the Palico. Oh, okay. The weapons have a truly menacing so I've watched this a few to times too. today. Uh, I may or may not as well. That long sword is still one of the coolest looking long swords in the entire franchise. Oh, oh, boy, you don't even know. So, Palico, how uh, are the skills and abilities? Is what I got on screen. Uh, yep, one second, and cat. There we go. So, 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 before we talk about the skills, anything like that, the design, what do you reckon? Um, do you play, uh, um so in terms of in terms of female? aggressiveness and and uh, and and pure like design points, uh, I have to say it's probably a nine out of ten. I think the only thing I would like is if it was a little bit more glowy, like had like the glowy points were a little more like pronounced. Other than that, it's freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah, this it design. Looks, it looks so cool. I do. I do actually personally like the um, the skirt for females. Like I'm a fan of a big skirt, um, just like a you know a, a elegant hunter mm. dress. We'll definitely differ there. I'm not a huge fan of that design, and I it's just because I it just never uh, is really done. Oh, I can hear a Kirin fan. 
Everybody slut shame Gravion. I'm not a character. No, I, I don't like that set either. <laughs> note, note, no, note my character wears pants and a breastplate and has long hair and horns. Like, Listen, listen. My character wears stylish boots and a fish on her head. So, Cloud, you shut your whore real... mouth. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Clouds so, and flyer shaming you for something I don't even like. I think Kieran, <laughs> honestly, female Kieran armor is one of my least favorite sets in the entire game. I don't, I, I don't like it either. No, initially, I initially, I um, so I initially when I started Base World, I've had a female character because the female armor sets almost always look better than the male armor sets. And then I saw the Negagante armor for females, and I was like, wow, this sucks. I'm changing to a male oh. character. Uh, That's literally how it went. Uh, no, aren't tempered Negagante boots? Those are like. You know, those hadn't come out yet when I changed. They bad, hadn't come out yet. Bad. But there were the alpha ones, and that's what the the gamma ones based off of. You can just stomp monsters with them. It's great. They're, yeah, and but, it, but the issue was not was not the boots that were did look bad. <laughs> it was the it was the fact that there was a bra and nothing else to cover you. Like no, no, no. There was a, there was a bra, and then there was a duvet that somebody had who had sewn needles into the entire thing. <laughs> into the it entire was, thing. Uh, Highlight of fashion, of course. <laughs> but, Clouds, um, but why no, would you insult our parents? They're the same people. Did he? Did he say like I don't know something about your mum and your dad? He said your mother was a hamster, and your father smelled of elderberries. But he he can say that. <laughs> but Clouds is my brother, so he's also insulting his own parents. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, that's what you think. Um, no. I mean, how, how different will it look? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah. So with the with the looks overall, we'll start with that because that's like the you know the least amount of substance. Uh, I like I like both. I, I kind of really really dig the like full face like mecha almost armor of the males. Uh, the palico armor is great because it looks like the the fey line, like the palico just sort of went, oh shit, my hunter is putting this on. Let's just make ourselves look like it and then forgot mm -hmm. to wear underwear that day. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> like goes to class without pants. Literally, yeah. Like this palico is living their nightmare. Um, but And the female one I think is great. If you haven't seen, I don't know if you can pull up the JPEG of the beta armor. Um, uh, the female beta oh armor God. is definitely my favorite. The headpiece is a lot, lot, a uh, lot more open-faced, and uh, the the waist piece definitely looks a lot better, in my opinion. Um, See if we can't yeah, Google search this. I, I definitely prefer the beta set, which is probably as the way uh, things go. This with is the one, right? Armor. Or is this this alpha? Oh, that true on beta. Oh, there we go. It should be the long sword, maybe. Yeah, yeah there long, we go. I yeah. see it on stream. I see it on stream. So not only do you have this amazing crown, which kind of looks like something out of like Demon Souls, I think. I'm gonna write um, while that loads. Oh, it's actually pulled up a lot uh, page. Nice. This is actually a great place to find it. Um, the uh, where are we at? the female armor. Um, I think personally, as uh, you know, I play as a female hunter. Um. But go. I think the sort of skirt is is great, and like the just the whole armor together looks amazing. Um, especially like you can see kind of like big boots as well. It reminds me a lot of Zenith Dara, like uh, Dara Girosu. Oh yeah, Dara Giros. But... Yeah, the U is yeah. slightly less pronounced there. Yeah, and oh, uh, dude, I I say Dara Girosu, and then I will say Meraginas, and I, I'll like leave out the U all the time. But Dora I think Giros. the beta. Yeah, I'll, uh, uh, the beta female armor I think is way better looking, in my opinion. Um, I don't know. I really like this uh, this aesthetic. Like, honestly, I was really I was always been a big fan of the big, long, flowing like your tacit connects to your chest plate, like it's almost like a you, like a duster. Know, you know kung fu? Holy hmm. shit! Sorry, what? You, actually, imagine imagine that though, because it looks like the male armor has like full length like jeans. Imagine that hmm. with the Devil Joe beta. Like waist, like just like a just champion. This is the belt. champion, but yes, hell yeah, yeah. that'd be awesome. But then, <laughs> then like incredible. the big pauldrons. Like I'm, I'm an old school MMO player. Like the big pauldrons is just a cool aesthetic to me. I was gonna say this is like feeding your MMO fix. Like you know? it totally is. Uh, it totally is. That's that's cool. But yeah, I think I think the Alatrin arm looks great. But moving away from that, the Christing weapons. My goodness. Yes, like uh, there are some new so I've not seen all have... of them, and they've not shown all of them. In fact, I should just reload that. Thing I just there are a of. few JPEGs going around, so they're talking about the skills now. Let's let's yeah, let's pause the video and move on to the weapon design. So, yeah, so... we have confirmed. We have the great sword. We have, I believe, the bow. Um, all fourteen weapons are getting uh, a unique design as well. So, 
you know anybody who cries over weapon design stuff shut up um <laughs> Ooh, is this the but, oh this is the, this is it cool so this is some of the ones we have confirmed here yes so we have the great sword we have the the hammer we have the charge blade looks a bit different i'm cool with that i think but, it looks great so right now this looks to be the the great sword is here this is the the yep. standard design the hammer looks the same the charge blade i think it looks very cool i like kind of like the aesthetic we've actually got the horns coming off of the front and this looks to be the lance on the far left maybe gun lance yeah I think that, no, that's the lance. So Alatrion has never had a gun lance before. There is actually a few new Alatrion weapons. Um, so far, we have the uh, light bow gun has been shown. Um, there has been dual blades shown, which look like the great sword but smaller. <laughs> um, the oh, wait, hang hunting on. one. Hang on, no, that shown. that's that on there. That's not the the charge blade. That's the sword and shield. No, no, that's the charge blade. The one. Are you, you just sure made. this oh, one? No, no, no. Sorry. Oh, you mean on the on the picture you're showing with yeah, the with the four, four here. Weapon. That looks with to be the, the sword weapon. and shield, actually, because that's a much yeah, smaller and then sword. Yeah, if you scroll down, yeah, this so, is the sorry, charge blade. You, I, I'm I'm watching it on uh, on stream here, so there's a bit of a delay. Yeah, but no the one with the four oh, weapons is the sword and shield, and the one that you've moused over kind of around about now is the charge blade. But the one that the charge blade is is that in the image they posted, Capcom posted. Uh, it had it in axe mode, which extends it a little bit. This one actually doesn't have that. So it's a little bit difficult. You don't know kind of what's going on. Um, so this here is one the, thing uh, that I'm the one that's very actually might excited. This actually might be the one from GU, but... Is that the switch axe? It's yeah. a switch axe, yeah. yeah. So there's one that I'm very excited about, which is the longsword is a scythe. God knows we've needed a scythe weapon for Christ knows how long. But there are, I think two maybe two maybe weapons they haven't shown off but only one of those matters to me we have not seen the Alatron gun lance or the light bow gun seen them. Uh, no no we have we have, have we i didn't realize that one yeah. came out cool i think it was like in the beginning of them showing off the skills but um we have not seen the gun lance yet and i am so excited to see what it is a lot of people have been saying it's going to be long seven for some reason um i hope it's no. not personally because i think right now it needs uh, to be normal is... like normal seven and normal eight yeah i think right now gun lance is in a very diverse place so like wide and normal are pretty much meta for like good raw matchups and then for you know other terrible matchups long is good and i think gun lance in fifth gen is good although but... i will say i think it would make sense to be a wide gun lance as well because it's kind of elemental based so you want you're doing a lot of pokes with that which is a decent elemental um motion values that so, too as well because if they make it long they're going to devolve it into well it's just about the shells and then only then is it worthwhile to say oh yeah it's long seven because otherwise you just use sarthi like meta sarthi long sets still use sarthi gun lance with zora mastery they don't even touch brachidium because they don't need it um mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's going to be interesting to see how it how it goes with gun lance yeah. Um, I just want to see it, to be honest, and I hope it it's more like I hope it's more of like a, a weapon design, like the raging bracky one, rather than like you know mm -hmm. you can still sort of tell it's a gun lance, like the Toby Kadachi one, which is like a unique design, but it still has like the the prongs and shit, you know. Mm -hmm. I think I think it'd be cool if they designed it in a way that looks like something you beat something with, and then you pull the trigger, and oh my god, there's a gun in there. I think that'd be a very cool way to design it. I, I like that aesthetic, though, like where it's mostly physical weapon, and then the gun is, is something that's just like brings it over the top. Yeah. Just make it a chain gun. Why not? That'd be kind of right. cool. That being said, they're talking about the set bonus, so this, I'll kind of let this play yeah, for a minute, but I yeah. this is something I really want to talk about because there's a lot of questions I have. Uh, and skills, I think that those answers to those questions are going to determine whether or not the set is amazing or if the set is actually dog shit. <laughs> so, last round Divinity. As you so, what this does, uh, we're going to pa I'll pause the video here for a moment, is your weapon's elemental power increases as your armor's elemental resistances improve. Now, they, they mention in this in just a second that it your elemental resistances that correspond to your current... Um, weapons element, but the example they show, your elemental power goes up based on your resistances um, just overall, because they're dragon resist here, and I'm gonna Raise move these. Elemental resistance. I'm just gonna your let this, uh, to be the... I need to try to find, there we go. Like oh, missed it. Crap. Try to find one that doesn't have the, uh, the text on the screen. There we go. So, you notice the dragon resistance here doesn't actually change, but the stats go up. So, 
but like the amount of amount of for one, the amount of damage of dragon element you're getting on this weapon, like from one weapon to the other, compared to the amount of resistances they're having to get on these sets, is actually nuts. Like how much resistance you need to get such a small amount of damage. You still there, sir? Still here. Okay. Um, yeah, so one thing that I do want to, and I see the screen you're on, it's kind of the same as mine. So if we look on the left, now I was trying to explain this previously. Um, right now it doesn't look positive with the Alatrion set bonus, but if we look on the left, we can see 770 Dragon, 15% affinity. By the way, 15% affinity with that raw. Uh, I will touch on this briefly, actually. If you go to the far left, we can see it says Alatrion Greatsword. Now, usually for these mm -hmm. Dev Diary things, they equip a weapon of the monster and the full set. Uh, you can see just below the, the white banner, it says Escadora My Alpha, Escadora Sheath Alpha. It's a fair assumption here to say that they're wearing the full alpha set. Um on on this sort of left hand like middle mm -hmm. kind of thing now but that is okay how do i explain this without visuals uh mm -hmm. basically on the left hand side of the white banner that talks about latrion divinity you want to draw a line down that everything to the left of that line is the pre set bonus information everything to the right of that line is the post set bonus information so so we're expecting you're expecting this is going to the set itself is going to give a ridiculous amount of additional that you think it's going to have like thunder resist fire resist water resist dragon or dragon resist or i guess, I guess not dragon resist but fire um, and a christ ice ton resist. of slots and an absolute christ ton of slots yeah i can only hope so because like this is this admittedly is a lot of elemental resistances. Like this is an insane amount of elemental resistances. Now, if we if we just to, just to sort of expand on this, because there's a lot of things to think about here. <clears throat> Again, I will preface this by saying we do not know. Safi set bonus is so damn strong for element. It's you know outside of maybe bow. I think it's you know you need to consider it basically it's still um, good on bow too let's go let's not get let's not it's it has to it, fight a lot yeah, harder to not, be good but terrible. it's still good on bow exactly yeah my, my it, concern it, here right. so so I'll, we'll go into a kind of a brief about why savvy set bonus is so good uh, so the way elemental damage works in monster hunter is that you're you have a, an elemental cap that is based on how high your weapon's elemental amount is the higher that element that base element is the more damage you can do before you get capped uh, at that at that maximum value uh, and so it's one of the and so what safi does is instead of just giving you another multiplier on top of your base value that will help you get help you reach that cap it actually gives you more damage like at the base level which means your cap is now higher and so you can you can then get even more damage output out of it. It's one of the reasons why Namiel set bonus, which does not give you base, it just gives you a multiplier on top of it, is not very good, and it's a trap for that reason. Um, now that's actually is going to be what make whether or not this is a good set bonus or not. That's going to be the key here. One, uh, okay, I guess one, how many or how many pieces of the armor do we need to get the full effect? And two, does this effect, is it a multiplier, or does it increase your base elemental value? If it increases the base, and it's a reasonable number of pieces, like a two-piece, four-piece, it's probably god-tier with three-piece sappy. Potentially, yeah. If Absolutely. not, it's probably going to get relegated to the, this is kind of a cool, but it's probably not as good, but it's not as good as Safi Jiva. So it's going to be, we're going to make it because it looks cool, and we're going to use it for layered armor when that drops in a few patches. And other than that, it's kind of, uh... Yeah. So, so if we expand on this, um, it could potentially be basically better than Nami, worse than Safi, because Safi is so damn strong. Not only does it have the affinity that comes with the five piece as well as the element, it also has the potential for the resentment proc. Now, mm. <clears throat> if we uh, go back to the whole line theory, so everything to the left of that imaginary line that I mentioned is the pre-set bonus stuff. We have, you can see on the left here, 17 fire, and then on the right, 40. On the left is, you know, zero water and thunder. On the right is 23. Uh, 40 ice, which matches up with the fire increase. So unless they have literally slotted in a certain level of element resistance up for every single element for the sake of this demonstration, if they have done, this, set, this, this skill is garbage. Mm -hmm. If they haven't done, this skill could be potentially okay. But the one thing that, that sort of piques my interest is at 453, 
The subtitles as say, you as you raise your elemental your resistance, resistance your weapons will be stronger in that element too. So you notice how that if we consider the left-hand side to be pre-set mm -hmm. bonus and the right-hand side to be post-set bonus, the dragon resistance doesn't change. It exactly. stays at 35. And that's potentially, 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 we don't know for certain. We don't know how it works. We don't know if there's thresholds or if it's a one-to-one a -one ratio or one to 0 0.8 ratio. Who knows? But potentially mm -hmm. for element, it could push out things like fire or dragon or whatever. Yeah, that that was where I was. I have some questions here too because they mentioned that it would be stronger in that element, but they don't show that with the example here. So they just show, they show that it increases by a let's be honest, a very small amount. That's exactly. that's literally like it's like that's literally like a five percent boost. It's it's like a five percent boost, yeah. um, from a from twenty three element in every other element other than dragon. But if it mm. actually increases a lot, say their dragon went up by five points, if they gain two hundred. Base L or a hundred base element from that for five points of dragon resist over a certain threshold, this would be insane. Exactly, and I like I'm I'm inclined to think that you know potentially because it was posted quite a while after Safi, you know we had an arc tempered and then we had a you know call come in. Would they make it really that weak? We don't know. We, at this point, we don't know. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting th to think about. And one other thing as well, if we go into sort of the grayed out areas. We can see that the greatsword, which is uh, named as Alatrion greatsword, is got a sh shoot ton of natural purple. You can curse, it's fine. <laughs> We've got a Christ ton of My natural viewers don't purple. fucking care. <laughs> yeah, well, um, you know, fair amount of natural purple with with uh, scope to expand. Um, decent amount of raw, I think. I don't, I'm not. Thirteen oh one is pretty good. That's uh, that's. Let me let me look up uh, acid great sword for a second uh i think it, well acid's not what people are using i think it i think that's like 1301 is like levels of like um like Safi blast like it might be higher i think it's actually higher than yeah. Safi blast Safi blast i think oh, is... shit. no no it's even better jesus christ uh 1301 with a latrium great sword uh acid shredder has 1392 yeah. So they're pretty close, and considering that Acid Glad was still kind of beating a few things out when when uh, Safi came in, that's that's a good amount of raw. But the thing is, is that that's not the final upgrade. Yeah, the final upgrade is like something. I think it's a Latrium Revolution, like, maybe? Revolution or De Decimator or something like that. It's some cool yeah. name. Like this is not. Yeah. So this means it could potentially have fourteen hundred plus raw, nat ridiculous amounts of natural purple. Like with even without. Uh, master's touch you could feasibly never like depending on like if you're actually landing your hits that's enough purple especially with sharp with like handicraft like a couple points in that to never run out of sharpness like purple sharpness also one thing i do want to look at is the element now i know element on a great sword is not really something to consider but cough cough frostcraft crit draw exactly the thing is is if we look up the furious rajang uh great sword um i need to see what sort of element it's going with here so demon lord god rod here we go so it's going with uh 300 element and the furious jang stuff is normally a little bit more skewed towards element mm -hmm. this has over double that so if we look at element focused weapons like dual blades or sword and shield potentially or charge blade or bow i guess we could be looking at a christ ton of dragon with these weapons now dragon is not the best element i mm -hmm. you know i agree but it could also be potentially useful on Latrion for the Elder Seal properties. Or just, just give you... me the Dragon Element LBG that isn't dog shit. <laughs> please. Oh, it's, it's, please, it's like the, like, Capcom. If the LBG is just like a dragon cannon, then it's like Portable Third all over again. Like, I will love it. I mean, I just want I want them to do a Horizon Zero Dawn style mod on it that it just tone down the damage, make it do Dragon Element damage, so we have a dragon option. And make it piss. It's like, it make it pierce. It's like it already pierces. That, that's how, that's why that mod is so good. It's exactly, yeah. so broken. Uh, but they could tone down the damage, and it would be just fine. I Please, this, base this Capcom. Be, <laughs> I think this will be one of those ones. It, in summary, for the gear, uh, so we can move on a bit to the next uh, the next guy. But in summary, I think that the um. The weapons look very promising if there's another upgrade. If not, they're kind of me mediocre right now. Um, and I think the if set, they have enough element on them, they could be things. solid as dragon element option. But the problem is that be dragon element options, and there's not a lot of monsters weak to dragon. You have Savage Devil Joe, okay. 
you have Savage Devil Joe. Yeah, there's Savage. There's, um, I mean, I guess uh, non-metal rats and uh, Ruiner, maybe. <laughs> like it's even, so even still, non-metal rats are more weak to thunder anyway, and it's just like okay. Wait, so let on? me go on. Where are you at? Element C is the focal point. Yeah, so I'm at 504 right now. So this is the other monster. We'll pause right. Oh, I missed the. Man, I missed the. Get the. There we go. Frostfang Berioth. So uh, not frozen Berioth from Monster and Explore, the mobile game. Thank God. So, yeah, I think that monster, that that game in, in general is kind of a joke. But um, mm -hmm. there's some cool concepts there, like the uh, was like the burst axe, or whatever it's called, where they like use it to like vault onto things. It looks pretty cool. Uh, but other than yeah. but that, but unfortunately, that's not coming into the game. Um, so Frostfang Berioth. So my issue is not with it being a Berioth variant. Is my issue is it, it's Berioth. I've been using that phrase, by the way. A friend of mine was like, "Oh yeah, why do you why do you hate Barrier? Uh, sorry, why do you hate this new variant?" I'm like, "I don't hate the variant part. I hate Barrier." And yeah, um, although it's it's worth noting that this is, of course, the first example of a monster that has a subspecies that now has a variant. So that's very interesting. But um, if we just uh, if we just let this section play out, so what is it like a minute or so? Let's just let it play out, and uh, then we'll talk about it afterwards. It's got a very rugged look to it, I think. Like it's yeah, and I'll mention here too is like this monster looks it looks awesome. Like I am totally I down with this. It looks great. Um, with an orange hue to the honestly, if this is what Baroth looked like all the time, this would be a, an absolutely appearance. fantastic. We can like see design. from that comparison, like look at look at they those like whiskers really and shit. This thing is very obviously a much older Berioth that has lived it's a very long strong, time, right? like Alpha Predator yeah. style. Breath, it's kind of pushing into the like deviant um, territory, ground. isn't it? A little bit, yeah. This is, this makes sense as a deviant monster. They mentioned it's always tempered as well, kind of like Scar Dion. Yeah, that's that. That was one of my first thoughts is that it's kind of like a scarred barrier almost. But um, I do like the fact as well visually. It looks amazing considering the, the tempered sheen that it has. Quite similar to um, very very nice. In other words, also, the breath attack is very cool. It looks like it stands still a lot more often too, which is a definite problem that the original Barrioth had, is it moved around too much. Yeah, so um, I think you were there for a couple of my attempts at speedrunning Barrioth, and a lot of it was like terrible hit zones. So it's going to be very, very hit zone de dependent. But uh, let's uh, let's just pause at let's see the female armor, shall we? Yeah. We also touched it up. And then uh, Dorkmas actually has asked us, why is Barioth hated so much? Functionally, what's the oh, difference between Barioth and Zenogar Tiger Tiger? Okay, how long, how long do you have, Dorkmas? Jesus. <sighs> so um, <laughs> so uh, let's, let, me, let me just rant for a second, if I may, Grav. Have at it, my good sir. You, you know my thoughts on Barioth, and you'll, I figure you'll be able to uh, articulate them. You've seen my suffering. So, so for those who do not know, um, I was requested a while back to speedrun Barioth with Hammer. Now, Hammer is a, as Grab knows, a much-loved weapon of mine. I enjoy Hammer and Iceborne. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Barioth, however, is not. <laughs> it's a monster that has... So, if we consider... Other members of the family, like Nagakuga or Tigrex. Tigrex has amazing hit zones on the arms once you tenderize. You can trip him infinitely, basically, if you have enough power and you're good enough. Um, Nagakuga is quick, but gets in close and stays close to you, so you can constantly use that amazing head hit zone that staggers him. Barioth does the opposite of those two. It has terrible hit zones on the wings that trip it, and it moves far away from you. In Try, when you broke Barrios' wings, it would dive towards you, slightly stumble, but would fall over near you. Mm -hmm. Now in 5th Gen, if Barrios trips over, it can literally Beyblade it around the entire arena and then land the opposite side of it. It's garbage. Not to mention you have to focus on tenderizing the head, which doesn't take great damage from most weapon types um, in general. And you still have to tenderize because, you know, in my in my case, I was playing a KO weapon, so I had to tenderize the head. You also had to tenderize the arm. So you had basically had three separate hit zones. You had to juggle staggers, KOs, tusk break, wing break, and tenderize on. And it was absolute filth. Um, I think current world record is a godly two minutes, but that is like at like the stars aligning two minutes. And my best run was a 326. Uh, before that, it was like 259. 
to give you an idea of, of of the times we're looking at and that two minute run was just just the most incredible thing uh, aqua amazing hammer player by the way um and I'll, I'll interject here just a quick second and from my, and from my slightly more casual view since i don't speed run monster hunter um yes. barioth is a very frustrating fight so old barioth was a they, when in world when iceborne came out nargakuga and barioth kind of swapped well, like, how, like, yeah. like how they were was put in to try to be like a, a placeholder for Tigrex and Naga. That's what he was there for. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and he was he was he was he wasn't very he wasn't super fast. He was slow. He was a lot slower. He was more deliberate in his attacks. He used a lot. He used the tornadoes to block line of sight and would launch himself off of his own tornadoes at you. Um, and there was a lot. It was a lot more exciting of a fight, even while it was slower. It was still. It was very fun and very cool to watch. But you could always. You never felt like it was, like Baroth was running away from you. Like it was kiting you around an area. Like you couldn't catch it no matter what you did. And I'm a bowgun player, so like that's that's not a good thing if a bowgun player feels like they can't catch a fucking monster. Um, but new Baroth is it's very fast, which is what Narg used to be, and now Narg is really slow for some reason. Um, it kites you around the battlefield. Uh, it with very little opportunity to actually hit it, especially if, unless you, if you're using a slow weapon. Like good luck. Um, and then on top of that, it's it doesn't from from someone who has played for a very long time. It doesn't do any of the attacks that made me enjoy fighting Barioth. And like I think part of my frustration with Iceborne Barioth comes from this is not the same monster. It looks the same. It doesn't act the same though. And it just it's 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 always a frustrating fight for me. No matter how yeah. good I get at it, no matter how, what I do to fight, no matter what changes to my attack style, attack patterns I do, no matter how I change up my gear, or whatnot, it never feels like I have a like it's like I ever have a better experience with it. Barioth is in what I like to call the bastard zone. The bastard zone is either you are speed running it or you are suffering through it. So you either have to go full on in, full on lock make sure it never moves, never does anything ever again, and then you get like a god tier time on it. Or you just go in, you you use everything. You use wall bags, you use traps, you use whatever, cheese the Christ out of it, and then somehow it still does a tornado and kills you. Um Barioth in fifth gen is a far cry from what it used to be in third and fourth. Um you can't win them all, in my opinion. So Barioth just had to be the sacrifice. Uh, but yeah, he was he was a real filthy, filthy minji bastard. Mm -hmm. And Dorkmas, I don't um, think I don't think the classification of the monster would would have changed my opinion really. If it was an ooh, elder dragon, classifications. If it was Holy an shit, grab. classifications, go and read me the question. I haven't got a chat. Out. So, uh, like, would you have viewed Barry out differently if it was a class? If it was classified as a deviant elder dragon or some other classification of a six star and uh, and over threat level? Like, if it was a, if it was set up as a as like an Alatron level like monster to fight. And I don't think that would change my opinion of it because it's not how it's described that is the issue. What the, my main issue is is that it is a frustrating and not fun fight. It's just not like it's there's so much potential there and it, they actually hit that potential on the nail with previous iterations and then they take they took this monster and they cut out the core of what made it cool and and just from there it just sort of died. It just it lost everything that made it fun, and it gained a bunch of stuff that made it not fun. I had a friend nearly quit the game because of, because of Barioth. Like, wow. that is how bad this fight is. Yeah, no, I, I do pretty much agree with Gravity. I mean, in terms of monster classifications, no. Um, in my opinion, having Barioth classified as anything else but what it is uh, would, would just not be the same. Um, I think a lot of the problem does lie in the fact that it was introduced in Try as a placeholder to Tigrex and Naga. So I think it was outside of Giganox, who was kind of like a pseudo Ivan uh, Kezu replacement. Mm -hmm. In terms of Try, when Barioth was introduced, Barioth was the Tigrex slash Naga Kuga placement so it tried to bring the best of both worlds and it did amazingly and somehow it still kind of worked in fourth gen uh in double cross when it was brought back but i think it was just kind of you know a, a missed one um like i said you know you will win some monsters you will lose some mm -hmm. monsters for a lot of people but i think barrioth in this case is kind of a foul ball for fifth gen it was great in third and fourth and it they just kind of whiffed it on this one which is a shame but 
Um, but I think focusing on it now that it has this new variant is going to be a very interesting point, considering that it has the uh, the new uh, snowman kind of thing going on. Yeah, it could be very cool. Uh, armor armor wise, uh, I th what do you say? I I rated my the Latrian armor. I'll let you rate this one. Oh, let me. Um, what in terms of looks first, or yeah? So in terms of looks, aesthetic, like just general aesthetic. How do you think it? Lo uh, what do you think of it? We'll get, talk about skills but, in a second because the skills are questionable. Yeah, I'll, I'll, give my, I'll give my thoughts on the skills in a moment, but uh, let me just fast forward. So, uh, uh, six thirty-seven is the female armor. So if you want to look, at I that. am. Yeah, I'm just looking at that. So the mask, very very cool. They said in a in the same dev diary they're going to be bringing in mask rank uh, layered stuff. So. I think it's cool. Um, there we go. So the great sword Touched and the palico so armor is what I mainly want to talk about. Um, so let's start with the palico the armor. Um, it's Dave be. Mustaine. And I'm a fan. <laughs> Pretty much. That's, yeah. that's it. It's fucking Dave Mustaine. Like, <laughs> that's all it, is. I, it, look, it looks like a, like a marching band. It, I, honestly, it looks like if I had white hair when I was in high school, uh, that's basically because it's got a marching band <laughs> uniform on. It's got the long Dave Mustaine hair. Um, it has a sword that I probably would have picked up an anime band. convention. Yeah. It's like that one art student who decided to join a mas marching band and a fencing club at the same time whilst also listening to Megadeth. That was it. Like, or at least like if Cliff Burton was decided, you know, he could live. Sadly. Oh frankly. man. Um, <laughs> I would, but, if, it, if it didn't require me to go to, uh, to personal social media things like Facebook, I would totally pull up a picture of me in high school and you guys see what I mean. <laughs> it's, it's very, it's very close. So Palakuama, 10 out of 10. Amazing, incredible, fantastic. Uh, but if I can get that hair on a duck, I'd love it. Um, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's move on. So they're talking it's here about the, uh, the skills, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, so there's one the thing that I do want to touch on, mm -hmm. which is the greatsword. Um, Where is that shown? Let me see if I can see. I think it's later on. It's, it's kind of after everything no it's not no it's not it's before it's before i lied or it might be on a social media post um but basically the great oh no it's was... uh, it's on the uh, mail armor set 629 yeah yeah so Sorry, the great sword 629 yeah okay so you in look like moment. yes so the great sword i don't think it's in this picture but uh if you look on the side that is obscured by the hunter it actually has extra barrier fur on it so the greatsword itself has this like like broad axe kind of uh design but cool. it, it also has extra barrier fur which leads me to believe either an extra custom augment level maybe or an extra level to the upgrade considering the barrier was a you know a tier two monster i think or yeah i could see know, this rarity. being a um kind of the way brute tiger is off a tiger's weapon so it could be like a, a yeah, an upgrade exactly. off of that I don't think it'll be a specific one you craft initially because it looks very, a lot like the Baryoth weapons. But yeah, in terms of the design, um, I think 10 out of 10 for people who enjoy that kind of bulky aesthetic and the and the mask is definitely going to be a hit, mm -hmm. 100%. It's, um, it's a very white wolf. Yeah, not my thing personally, but I can see the appeal, you know? Yeah, for sure. Like, I'm, I'm not a fan of, like, bulky stuff. I prefer, like, modern... You know how people have those kitchens that are, like, big wood burners and, like, huge ass stoves and shit? Mm -hmm. I'm much more like the like the blank space in the Matrix, you know? I like my shit sleek and modern, uh, but not skimpy. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not a horny modern person. <laughs> I'm just a modern person. Um, so, right. uh, skill-wise, um, I'm, I'm going to leave it just kind of frozen here yeah. for now because they don't actually show the skills. So they mentioned they, it's actually a one-piece and a three-piece set bonus. So, so I want to mention... First time. The First con time they've ever done that. It's so, been a one-piece bonus. Is it, it, it can't be a set bonus if it's only one piece because the set bonus implies that you have more than one piece of the same set. Hey, what it's happens when skill. you put on a hat, grab it on you, set it on your head? Come on. <laughs> it's it's just it's just a single piece. <laughs> oh my god! Like it's and and so like that. So that that's gonna irk me. But other than um other than that, so it's punish draw is the one piece, and the three piece is slugger secret. So punish draw. Right now, that's only available like as a two-piece set bonus, I believe, from like Diablos, I believe. Or maybe that maybe that Slugger maybe it's a four-piece from Diablos. No, um, yeah, no, Slugger is three-piece from Diablos. Oh, three-piece from Diablo, yeah. Yeah, Punishing Draw is from 
I think normal Barioth as a two piece, um, but obviously if you use a Sathi weapon, it's a one piece. Mm-hmm. But this one relegates it to one piece, but still retains the three piece of Slugger Secret. So, uh, do you see any use? Because I know. So if we look at old Great Sword, that's really the only thing that ever has ever used Punishing Draw yeah. that I know of. You ran Crit Draw, Punishing Draw, um, a bunch of fucking damage stacking, and then um, and then you laughed as you played the draw style. Could we see a comeback with that with One Piece um, I, Frozen Barrier? I think so. I think so. I think we will not see like an amazing comeback, but um, potentially... Okay, so the idea that I have in my head is a maxed out Safi like set or, you know, raging or whatever. Um, <clears throat> you will run four piece Volcana or three piece Volcana and one piece Barrioth and then Damascus Chest maybe for focus. I can see that, yeah. And what you will do is you'll either do aerial or for you style. So you'll have this punishing draw, which is basically at this point with Volcana armor, a uh, sheath control, if you remember that. Yeah. Uh, which was punishing draw, quick sheath, and uh, crit draw, maybe? I can't remember. I don't but... think it was crit draw. I think it was like something else. Maybe I had crit draw. Oh, it's been a long time. Might, might have been just the two, to be honest, like punishing and, and quick sheath. Mm-hmm. But um, regardless, so potentially we could see like a resurgence of like, like they're kind of trying to retcon. I'm going to sneeze in like two seconds. <laughs> Damn it! Oh, Jesus, um, you can tell it's getting late. It's half two. So, um, but yes. So with with this, we could potentially see a resurgence in Frostcraft Greatsword Star, which I I did enjoy personally. It was pretty um, cool. Especially, uh, it, it was pretty cool. It, it, it made a meme mecha. viable. So the meme and the meme being Elemental Greatsword, uh, and with the addition of Elatrion weapons having a ridiculous amount of dragon, maybe we see some crit draw Elemental Greatsword with dragon. <laughs> Going maybe, four maybe, piece Belkana to get uh, crit draw and um, and frostcraft and crit element, and then yep. running a one piece of this to get punish draw. We we might see something like that. I don't know if it'll be really that well liked or anything like that, but I, I could definitely see it being uh, being. I think experimented I think with. it could be like a nice like I think if you took this on Kirin, that would be such a fun time. Like it wouldn't be speed run to here, but it would be such a fun thing to just do. Just clubbing yeah. a spirit, a Kieran to death with a sword. Literally just charge level three, hit the head, big old juicy hit, big old stun hit, sheath, go again. Like I think this would be a very, very good resurgence of that crit draw style, personally. Uh, I'm excited to see it. Um, I think, I think. It could be nice, but I can't think of any other weapons that it would be good on. Yeah. Because at this point, we've backed ourselves into a set bonus corner. You know, all of our set bonus slots are taken up. Yeah, that's also my concern with the last round. Because I mentioned, like, if it's a two piece and you can you can mix it with three piece Safi, it will be insane. If it's not, I st- it's going to have to be incredible with uh, with kind of what we talked about earlier for it to be able to beat out all of the crazy good things Safi gives you. Because like with our current set bonuses, you have you have two main schools of set bonuses. You have Safi, the Savvy Hemoth, which is either five piece or three piece, or, um, and then you have uh, Raging Brachidios with, with the Brachidium armor, which you either run four piece or two piece. And then there's some there's some other variants like I know uh, some sets use Master's Touch with those. Some sets use a combination of Safi Raging, uh, which, which is most I think most melee weapons are now three piece Safi, two piece Raging uh, for the Agitator Secret. Gunlance uses all five pieces of uh, Brachidium armor because they're incredibly efficient. All Gunlance, but Long, yes. Yeah, uh, Long uses something different. Actually, but... no, no, no. Actually, I'm, I am going to be an asshole and correct you here. Um, Kulv did something good for damage outside of Free Mill Secret. So, <laughs> so what happened is if you use the Kulv Alpha legs with full four piece Brachidium, mm-hmm. Uh, you can also squeeze in peak performance on your melee gun lance set. So like uh, oh, okay. normal and wide and things like that, they can actually get peak performance in, but they literally have no place for anything like slinger capacity or evasion or anything like that. So you just have to go full on like balls to the wall. Like I, I'm going to win this in one worm stake or death, I guess. That makes sense. Yeah, it's um, um, it's uh, it's it's gonna be weird. Like, I think we're definitely gonna have to see next week when it drops, and obviously, uh, we'll be doing it. I mean, I'll be well, doing it on Thursday. Is an out. So what? For a while, so Frost Fang is an out um next week. It's just a lateral next week. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, but we'll have to see just overall in terms of things. So. 
Yeah, because Frostfang's in an event quest, which is going to talk about in a minute. One thing that I will. You're kind of cutting out for a second, dude. Event quest only. I just, I just lost your, uh, you there for a second. Uh, yeah, I think. Yes. Internet testing, testing, testing. Okay, I can hear you now. You're good. I say that. Cool. Um, so I will say, uh, I'm just gonna keep talking at this point. Um, we can Alatron hear you just fine. Alatron is cool. Um, so Alatron is going to be. I take the back. We we literally the moment you started saying that again, it just died. <laughs> it just absolutely died. Oh, rest in peace. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I see what graph. Um, yeah. Piss, piss. I think said immediately, immediately we were mostly finished with what kind of what we I wanted to go over, which is the new monsters. The rest of the stuff is some small things like you can um you can now craft items to call specific monsters out of uh, the guiding lands, which is very cool. Um. There is going to be some new uh, some new squad cards and things, which is just kind of cool aesthetic stuff. Um, there's some new some new pendants and things that look kind of cool. Uh, there's the new event, which is coming up, which is the uh, Sizzling Spice Festival, which is very Mardi Gras themed, uh, which I think is very it looks pretty awesome. The designs are very very cool. New handler outfit. Uh, the new uh, Puke Puke cat costume is very very cute. I like that as well. Uh, and then a couple of new event quests and things to get like an Aptonoth helmet. There's a Kelby helmet as well, which I think is a ways back. Oh, and the the best the best Poogie costume in the history of mankind uh, is a is it, Poogie is an egg and a, <laughs> a um Kuluyaku is riding him. <laughs> uh, best Poogie costume. Uh, and there's some other things too, like they're releasing uh, some rabbit ears and. Uh, a layered armor that makes it look like your default armor. Basically, it's like you're wearing no armor. And that's kind of it. And then the last thing that uh, we can kind of mention is that the fifth title update, which will be out in this fall, uh, Master Rank Layered Armor, we kind of mentioned earlier, and there's another returning monster, so we'll have to see what that is. I'm hoping Gogmazios, but I doubt that. Or maybe Gamoth. Gogmazios or Gamoth, that's my my wish here. No. Uh, Gogmazios would be Gog... God tier, uh, a cantor would also be incredible. Um, before my internet just craps itself, Patreon quests are, are going to be event only, according to Twitter. Um, so you'll do the special assignment, then it's going to be an event only, which is going to be a bit difficult. Right now, the end date for the event is TBD. We don't know. Um, but definitely get on that Alatrion train before it leaves the station. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's weird. I think they might have hit their quota for, you know, new quests, but we'll have to see. Um, TLDR, Grab, what's your overall summary of this dev diary? Let's hear it. Uh, TLDR, um, Alatrion and Frostfang look kind of cool. Uh, Frostfang is still Baryoth, though, so question mark. Uh, Latrion armor could be very good. It could be god tier. It could also be dumpster tier, like like most of Arctimber Namiel's armor. Um, Sizzling Spice Vessel, very cool. I like that, the aesthetic. I think it looks awesome. I'm excited to kind of just get some, some of the layered armors from that. Uh, and then the um, Frostfang Baryoth, we won't get to see till next month, so I guess we'll kind of see how that's going. Uh, and then we'll see how, how hard Latrion's quest actually is going to be, because it could be yep. ultra hard. It could be... Uh, question. It could be questionably easy. We just don't know yet. And I guess we'll find out. As I'll be doing that Thursday, Sarah. Hopefully, you'll be up to join me. If not, um, I'll relay my uh, my hopefully, quest of yeah. pugging it, um, hopefully successfully, um, a little bit later. Um, I do it suffer. It'll be funny. <laughs> yeah, but we'll be streaming that anyway. So that being yeah, said, I uh, think I'll, I'll get back on that train. Um, just as a fun, uh, I think the Alatrion and New Barioth, uh like mechanics will be the main tell. So, depending on what works for Alatrion, depending on how the element stuff works for Alatrion, versus depending on how pitons are on Barioth and just the general fight and mechanics of the innate skills on both armor sets, will give us a good idea. I'm excited 
for Electron weapons, definitely, if they have an extra upgrade and if they have uh, maybe more drag than normal or something to make them relevant. Uh, a lot of this is dependent on ifs, though. So right now, I am, as I was before with Electron, is skeptical. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm still 9 to 5 again next week. But after that, I do have a week off. So, And I do plan on getting back into streaming and such so we could probably chad and latch on to death uh, for like an hour uh when it drops and then we'll go from there sounds good um, my for dude. now though uh it's 3 a.m for me my time uh my internet is cutting out which is telling me gravy on here has uh some yes we've got some uh some gu planned for tonight so thanks for being on sarah um your That's internet's right, dying so we cut about half of what you've said in the last few minutes so <laughs> It's, it's been Phil. Just just have a good time, lads, and post the bubbles. That's... All right. Internet dead. See you later. <laughs> Peace, dude. Peace. Right, I'm going to end this call real fast, and then we'll uh, get back into it. So, back to G2.